carbon dioxide is a gas. It's all around us. You can't see it. It's invisible. And there's only a, a small amount of it in the air, but it's really important because uh, it absorbs heat. And right now it's making the planet warmer because it's increasing. Carbon dioxide is a carbon and two oxygens, so it's written as CO2. So I usually just say CO2 for short. Um, it's invisible, but we've had instruments that can measure its concentration for about 70 years. Uh, and in the late 50s, measurements were started at a place called Mauna Loa in Hawaii, on the Big Island of Hawaii. So what I'm going to do is draw a graph. The numbers on the left are showing the concentration of CO2 in parts per million of CO2. So I'll write a big PPM CO2 over here. And then on the this axis over here is just the time or the date. So these are years. When those measurements were started, um, in the late 50s, the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere was around 315, 318 parts per million. So it was about right there. Um, and Dave Keeley, the person who started these measurements, found out after about a couple years that they were going up, but they weren't going up in a straight line. They were kind of wiggling. And so CO2 has been doing something like that ever since. And it started going up even faster. And by the time it got to Around 2000, it was in sort of the 380, 390 range. And then it crossed 400 right about 2016. And now we're right about 415 parts per million for the global average. The reason that CO2 concentration is going up is because we're burning all these fossil fuels in our cars and power plants. So those are fuels that were buried underground for millions of years. We've been measuring carbon dioxide uh, continuously at a place outside of Nederland, Colorado called Niwot Ridge. So this is at about 11,000 feet altitude. It was, we actually started those measurements in 2005. And if I plot those uh, on here, they are a lot noisier than, than the red curve. And what they actually do is they go lower during the summer and they go higher during the winter and lower during the summer and higher during the winter. We became interested to see what it was uh, even closer to home. So we in installed an instrument here at the Mesa Lab, and that's been going since 2012. And what we found then was that CO2 was even more variable, and it went from about um, the same place as the others, but it went all the way up to 650 parts per million. Every, you know, every few days there's a spike that goes way up, and, um, and, the, and the reason it's more variable um, could be because there are people walking around the building, but it could also be because uh, there are more cars and, and uh, there's a, until recently a coal burning power plant here in Boulder and, and other um, sources of CO2 around the, around the front range. So one thing we've noticed is that uh, in the middle of the morning, there's often a spike in CO2 here at the Mesa lab. And we've kind of wondered if that was because people were showing up to work late. Um, or driving around Boulder, or if it's because um, the, the way the air mixes, it just brings all the CO2 from down in Boulder to us. So we're gonna try and do some vertical profiles by biking up and down the hill um, with a CO2 analyzer to, uh, during the morning transition period, to get a better idea of what's causing CO2 at the Mesa Lab to vary. Okay, let's go get Tim to bike this CO2 analyzer up and down the hill a bunch of times. So this is the, bike CO2 analyzer. Um, Check that and, out. Uh, yeah, it's uh, like uh, other instruments that we have at field stations or on airplanes, but it's smaller uh, and battery powered. So um, it's like a big lunchbox. Yeah, I, there's, I don't think you want to eat what's in here. And there's a little pump uh, and I think I can turn it on here. Um, you, you can hear the pump running and that sucks air in to the instrument. Um, uh, from a tube that uh, is out on the front of the bike. Oh, and, then, okay. and then the actual instrument, I can take the lid off and we can look inside. It's a little bit easier to tell what's going on. If you can see in here, there's two tubes, one going in and one coming out. So that, that pump's gonna suck the air in from outside and push it through these tubes. And on one end of this uh, gold colored uh, Cylinder? cylinder? Cylinder, that's the word I'm looking for, is yeah. a lamp. Uh, so it's a little tiny, uh, almost like a light bulb that um, produces infrared radiation. And on the other side is a detector that um, 
can sense how much is there. So if there's more CO2 in between here, there would be less uh, infrared radiation oh. making it to the other end. So, so there's a signal, we measure the voltage and the voltage would go down when the CO2 goes up. Wow, that's pretty simple. Versa. So, uh, but we basically just turn this on and turn the pump on and it'll measure continuously the whole time you're going. We get a number every second. Uh, and it also measures pressure at the same time. And that's how we're gonna tell how high you are on the road. Um, because sea level pressure um, is um, around 100 kilopascals or 14.7 pounds per square inch. Okay. Um, up here, it's about 80% of that because we're, we're really? 5,000 feet above sea level. So there's a lot less air above us. And there's actually a lot less air above us here at the NCAR Mesa Lab than there is down at the intersection of Broadway and Table Mesa. Yeah, the skies are pretty blue. Yeah. And there you go. And we're all set. Just like that. There you are. Thank you. Eighty point six kilopascals. So as they start going down, that that number will start going up. Some point on the way down that hill, CO two went way up. Maybe we should call Tim and find out where he is. Hello. Hey Tim. Hey. Where are you? Entering the school zone just past the church. So you you, you hit about four hundred and seventy five ppm. Um, and it was a pretty sharp transition right about where you are now. It looks like. Oh, really? Like, did you feel like the air all of a sudden got clearer? It was definitely colder <laughs> here. We're getting the occasional uptick. I don't know, maybe... Um... A cart just went by. Okay. Interesting, it went up to like 500. 500? And car CO2. Do, 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 do. Eh. Car CO2. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit noisier on the way up because those were the cars that went by and maybe a little bit of your breath, but you can see the kind of the baseline. I don't know this time if you go down there if it's going to go higher concentration of CO2 because there are more cars, people are commuting to work, or if it's going to go lower because the sun's up and it's heated the ground and cause more mixing to happen. So we don't know, yeah, let's do it again. We're turning around now, getting ready to come back up. Okay, we're actually on Table Mesa now. And a couple of cars are going by. Oh. That's not you right there, is it? You're at 419 now. There was, you were 440 for about two minutes on the way up there. So I don't think that was a truck. I think that was just a puff of dirty boulder air. Oh, uh, okay. As you can see, it's so peaceful out here. <laughs> Oh, an EV just went by, full electric. That was that was a gas burning car and the electric car didn't do anything. But you know, if you ignore the spikes from the cars, the CO2 has been going down slowly as you've been climbing up.
Bike number two was a success, and I managed to convince Tim and Riva to do it one more time. C O two. I'm so curious what it's gonna look like this time coming back up. What are we measuring? You measured 420 at the bottom. 420 was the lowest? Which is what it is up here. So it's like this, this slug of dirty air is moving up in like a, a layer. Oh. All right, great work everybody. Let's go back inside and see what we've got. Tim and Riva biked up and down the hill three times and now we're gonna check out um, what we measured. What I'm showing here is a graph of carbon dioxide concentration as a profile, a vertical profile on the hill. Pressure goes up as you go down, and so the y-axis is a pressure and it's reversed, so lower values are up and higher values are down. So that, that makes it align with the real world, so you can kind of think of this graph as um, representing the NCAR Mesa Lab at the top left and then the intersection of Broadway and Table Mesa at the bottom right. Um, and then the x-axis is the carbon dioxide concentration. So concentration was almost constant all, most of the way down the hill and then all of a sudden, right as they got near the bottom, it went shooting way up. So that's really cool. I think this is um, a result of all of the pollution that uh, builds up overnight in, in Boulder. Um, the air is usually pretty calm. All of the Burning of gas in cars and uh, burning of natural gas to heat homes produces CO2 that, that accumulates overnight. So let's see what we got when we um, compare all the profiles we did. And that's shown on this graph. So again, this is pressure on the y-axis and carbon dioxide on the x-axis. And the Mesa Lab is at the top left and the Broadway Table Mesa intersection is at the bottom right. This is really cool. So uh, we didn't measure the same thing every time. It changed a lot, but it, uh, I think it changed in ways that, um, that we can understand. So the, the very first time down and up are the red and the orange line, and they went, they went way up to about 460 parts per million. And on the way back up, the orange line, we saw some looks like little plumes of high CO2 on the way back up. The very next time that Tim and Riva went down were the green lines here, and Carbon dioxide was actually higher kind of on the hill on the way down, but then when they got to the bottom of the hill, it, it didn't, the concentration didn't go up as much. I, I think what that is is the air is starting to mix, so it's, um, the sun is coming up and it's heating the surface and it's, it's making that air warmer and the warmer air wants to rise and it's sort of, sort of slowly coming up the hill. And then they did it one more time. Uh, they were having so much fun, they wanted to go again at um, around 10.30, and those are the blue lines, and those are crazy. They, they, they saw really high CO2 concentrations on the way down the hill. And then when they got to the bottom, the concentration was actually even lower than before. So I think that they just happened to catch this big plume of uh, dirty boulder air that was uh, kind of wafting up the hill in the mid-morning. And that happens to be exactly the same time when we saw uh, some big spikes in the CO2 concentration in our measurements here at the Mesa Lab. And it's the same time when we usually see them. So, uh, I think it's pretty clear that the spikes we see up here in the mid-morning are a result of all of this air that's accumulated overnight down low, getting sort of sucked up past the, past the Mesa Lab. So now we know why we get these big spikes of uh, CO2 up here at the Mesa Lab um, in, in sort of the mid to late morning. Um, and that's great. If we could only convince Tim and Riva to bike up and down the hill um, three or four times every day, we could really do a great uh, research project.